All right. So it's finally here after a lot of wait and delays. We have the Oxygen OS 12 Open Beta 1 for the OnePlus 9R. And most of us have been waiting since months for this to come because it is a baby of Color OS and Oxygen OS. And since OnePlus said all the good things only, well, we'll see how it goes. And though this is still an open beta update, there are certain things to keep in mind. But before we get into all that, make sure to tap on that subscribe button if you wish to watch more videos like this one. And in case you wish to watch this video in Hindi language, here is a card to the BitTech Hindi channel as well. First, well, do not hurry and install this update because it is an open beta update and not a stable one. So it is bound to have some minor bugs and various issues. So in case you are on the stable version, just stay on it for some days if you want the best possible experience. Second thing, you can easily go from stable to open beta without losing data. Yes, you heard it right. You won't lose any data, but still take a backup before you flash this version. Rest, everything will stay as is, but backup for your safety only. And if you wish to come back to stable from open beta, you will end up losing your data. And I'll share a separate video on that as well. Now let's move on to the process on how you can install this one on your device. Well, the process is really simple and you're already used to it. So basically, like you install every update, just download the zip file from the link in description area. And when you will download it, it will be in the downloads folder, of course. After that, you will have to cut it out from the download folder and paste it outside, not into any folder as such. Just make sure to do this step properly, else the system will not be able to detect that zip file. Okay, so after keeping it in the internal storage, now go to settings. Here, go to system, choose system updates from the list and click on this gear icon on the top right corner. Now choose local upgrade option from the list and choose the zip file we just downloaded and click on this OK button. And you can even see it on the pop-up that it will not format your data. So read this pop-up every time you install an update. And now this will start installing the Oxygen OS 12 Open Beta 1 on your OnePlus 9R. And by the way, you can also install this on your OnePlus 8T as well. And if you want a video on that, let me know in the comment section down below. So this will take some time, usually around 5 to 10 minutes, and you can leave your device as is for some time. And I'm fast forwarding the process just to save some of your time. Okay, so after it's done, you will see this reboot option. And that means the update has successfully been installed. So to complete the process, all you have to do is reboot your device. And there you go. So now you are on Oxygen OS 12 Open Beta 1 on your OnePlus 9R. And it does feel same, yet different. And I won't repeat the same line that it is color OS only. Well, you all know it. Instead, let's focus on what it brings to the table and what changes are there. First up, right from the lock screen itself, the fingerprint scanner animation has changed now. And well, you know where it is from. But for what it's worth, it works really fine as it should. And similarly in the launcher, the icon pack from Oxygen OS is gone now, which is something I definitely loved and will miss it. As this phone icon looks kinda cheap, or is it just me? Let me know in the comment section down below. The launcher also looks a bit different now, love it or hate it, and this is what it is now. Of course, it is not the OnePlus launcher as you must have guessed it by now. By default, we get some of the applications and thank God and OnePlus for almost no bloatware, except that Facebook Messenger. Well, we can easily uninstall that, no worries. And apart from that, the theme store is there, which I'll get to in a second. So more or less, the system is still clean. Also, there are some widgets from Android 12, which weirdly can be added once you long press on the home screen and tap on this plus button on the top left corner. And also there is no material you theming or any sort of custom theming engine, which might come later as Google said the same. So for now, it is not there, but the haptics do feel better and a bit more refined here. The app closing animation and everything feels fluid for now. And I don't see any issues here. Though you might get annoyed to see the shelf every time you swipe down from the top right corner, but you can turn it off easily. So on the shelf screen, click on this gear icon on the top right corner and turn off the shelf from top right corner option. Also, yes, the shelf is kinda new now and it looks like this with its new UI and it has some refinements here and there. Also, the applications like OnePlus Dialer and Messages from Oxynos 11 will just not work on this one. So don't even try. And yes, you still have the Google dialer only. So if call recording is your priority, stick to Oxygen OS 11 until I can find a solution to this one. Lastly, in the launcher, the wallpaper picker has also been changed now and it looks something like this. It also brings some new animations, which you can try as well. 
Overall, it feels smooth, just like OxenOS, but it doesn't carry that same feel. One irritating thing that I saw here was the privacy request pop-up that is there in almost every single place. And they are basically asking to collect more data now, as well as the permission that the app needs. So it just doesn't look nice and it is necessary to agree to it, which is very wrong in my honest opinion. Now going into the settings and here the UI has changed as well, which is fine and it looks good enough I would say. One more thing that got changed here is the customization tab and that is now called personalizations. And here we have a bunch of options like before. So you do get the always on display with all the older themes that were there, including the Insight AOD, Bitmoji and the Canvas AOD. And it's good to see all of them present. The Canvas AOD has also been upgraded now and it even has more options to choose from in case you are into that. In the icon tabs, you can tweak some icons and shapes, but you can still tweak the accent color, thankfully. And I love the fingerprint animations especially the fireworks one and some extra animations have also been added. Overall, the fingerprint scanner is fast and responsive, so no issues there. Now about the theme store that has been added, well, I really would not like to apply any theme just to make it look even more far from stock. And it looks kind of funny to me sometimes, but some of you might like the theme store as it does have some free themes as well. And I do feel this was given just to earn more money by selling content like Xiaomi and other brands too. Now let's have a look at the benchmark scores after this update and let's see if there is any improvement in the scores on paper. Next up we have this dark mode toggle which has finally brought the pitch black dark mode with it. And I'm quite happy about it of course. So thank you for that Oppo. Next we have this new OnePlus gallery which is now called Photos. And this is also in tune with Oxynos 12. So it looks more or less kind of same. Coming to the camera application now. So after this update, the version of camera application has been bumped up from 5.8.120 to 5.9.43. But it is still the OnePlus camera application and not the Oppo camera app. So the UI is similar and all the modes are similar as well. So here are some camera samples from after the update and I'll test it out even more and post an in-depth review. But for now, here is what they look like. So as you can see, well, not much has changed and the images do look similar mostly. And I see some more grain in the front facing camera samples. Though there are no new features introduced with the Oxygen S12 on the OnePlus 9R. And that is a bit disappointing. Similar is the case for videos as well. So let's see how it will do in various scenarios. Now, apart from all that, we have the 100 mode just like on the Pixel devices. And the other features like Scout, Quick Launch, Zen mode, and work-life balance mode are also there as well. The screen recorder has also changed now, and as expected, it looks the same like that on ColorOS. There is also an option to bring all the icons down while using the device with one hand, so I think that's nifty as well. About the overall performance, well, the device does seem snappier as compared to OxygenOS, but at the cost of some features, UI, among other sacrifices. And I'll also test out the battery life after this update, and yes, the battery tab has also been changed now. Plus, you have that high performance mode, so the device won't stay in maximum performance like before. And you will have to turn on this mode to get the best results while gaming. Speaking about gaming, the gaming mode is also from Oxynos only, and I did play BGMI for some time, and the 90fps mode is not there as of now. So you are stuck with smooth extreme settings at max. And also, you cannot force 120Hz mode like before. But I did find a solution and here is a video on how you can do that. Rest, I'll test the performance even more, so stay tuned for the full review. Overall, it does feel more refined than OxygenOS 11, but the UI might not be that appealing to everyone now. Other than that, there aren't any major issues and features like dynamic theming or material UI are not there. So everything else is fine more or less as this is just color OS without some features. And it is what it is now. Love it or hate it. The Dolby Atmos is also a bit better looking now and similar to what we get with color OS 12. And in case you wish to watch that video, here is a card for all the features in color OS 12. Rest, if I missed out on any tiny stuff, well, I'll be covering it out really soon. So do like this video if it helps you out and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one.